Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship. It's good to see you all today and good to hear your laughter as we gather for worship this morning. I invite you all to stand as you are able for our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. We sing together our gathering hymn number 857, Lord, I Lift Your Name on High. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Let us pray. O oh God, rich in mercy, you look with compassion on this troubled world. Feed us with your grace and grant us the treasure that comes only from you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Our first reading is from Amos, chapter 1, verses 1a and 4 through 7. Alas, for those who are at ease in Zion, and for those who feel secure in Mount Samaria. Alas, for those who lie on beds of ivory, and lounge on their couches, and eat lambs from the flock, and calves from the stall, who sing idle songs to the sound of the harp, and like David, improvise on instruments of music, who drink wine from bowls and anoint themselves with the finest oils. But we are not grieved over the ruin of Joseph. Therefore, they all shall now be the first to go in exile, and revelry of the loungers shall pass away. The word of the Lord. <clears throat> Our second reading is from 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 6 through 19. Of course, there is great gain in godliness combined with contentment, for we brought nothing into the world so that we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with these. But those who want to be rich fall in temptation and are trapped by many senseless and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil, and in their eagerness to, to be rich some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many pains. But as for you, man of God, shun all this. Pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called, for which you were made good the confession in the presence of many witnesses. In the presence of God, who gives life to all things, and of Christ Jesus, who is a testimony before Pontius Pilate, made good confession. I charge you to keep commandment without spot or blame until manifestation of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he will bring out about at the right time. He who is blessed and only sovereign, the King of kings and Lord of lords. It is he alone who has immortality and dwells in unapproachable light whom no one has ever seen or can see. To him be honor and eternal dominion. Amen. As for those who present age are rich, command them not to be haughty or to set their hopes on uncertainty of riches, but rather on God who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. They are due to do good, to be rich in good works, generous and ready to share thus storing up for themselves the treasure of good foundation for the future, so that they may take hold of their life that really is life. The word of the Lord. I invite any kids that want to come up for the children's message to come on up now. Come join me. Only one today? All right, well, we can have a conversation. All right, I am wondering, what makes you feel loved? I don't know. You don't know? Is there anything that people do that makes you think, I know that they love me? Um. What do your parents do that makes you know that they love you? Play with me. They play with you? Anything else? Mm. No. Do they feed you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> do they give you hugs? Yep. Yeah. Do they tuck you and your siblings in for bed at night? Yep. Yeah. What other sorts of things do they do? Take fishing. <laughs> they take you fishing? Mm-hmm. Yeah. They do things that you enjoy because they know what you like? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
how do you think you could help other people feel loved? Like your friends in school, how would you make sure that your friends know that you care about them? <laughs> Come on, work with me here. <laughs> Yeah, you usually have lots of answers. That's OK. Um, let's see here. When I want to make sure that my friends know that I care about them, I, I might get them a little gift because I saw something. It made me think of them. And I thought, I think I'm going to get this for you. Or I might sit with them at lunch and play with them and hang out with them. I might say, hey, you're being really kind today, and I really appreciate you. I might tell them things that I appreciate about them. Yeah, these are all ringing bells. Sounds like ways that you would make sure your friends know you care about them. Yeah. Well, in our gospel today, we hear a story of someone who didn't really have anyone like that. He didn't have someone who was telling him that they cared about him. And we hear in this story from Jesus that God really wants us to love each other. And so there's so many different ways to make sure that people feel seen by us and that we can make sure that they know that we care. Even if they're not our best friends, even if they're a total stranger, there's so many ways that we can make sure that people know that we care about them as a human being. And so that's what I invite you to think about at school this week and as you encounter every single person you see this week is, how do they know that I care about them? And maybe that might invite you to do something new or something different so that you can show them that you care. All right, will you pray with me? Will you all pray with me? Repeat after me. Dear God, Thank you for loving me. This week, help me to see others and help me to show them I care. Amen. Thank you. You can head back to your seat. And I invite all of you to stand as you are able for our gospel acclamation. I almost took my stole off standing up there. Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and who feasted sumptuously every day. And at his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who longed to satisfy his hunger with what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs would come and lick his sores. The poor man died and was carried away by the angels to be with Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, where he was being tormented, he looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. And he called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. And send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in agony in these flames. But Abraham said, Child, remember that during your lifetime you received your good things, and Lazarus, in like manner, evil things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in agony. Besides all this, between you and us is a great, a great chasm has been fixed, 
so that those who might want to pass from here to you cannot do so, and no one can cross from there to us. The rich man said, Then, Father, I beg you to send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, that he may warn them, so that they will not also come into this place of torment. Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. They should listen to them. He said, No, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. And Abraham said to him, If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced, even if someone rises from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. After moving to Rochester as a kid, I went to a school that did things a little differently. It was a K-8 school, and age groups were put together so that you had the same teacher multiple years in a row. So I had the same teacher three years in a row in sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. And it was a small school, and so even though I started there in fifth grade, all of the teachers, whether they were my teacher or not, got to know me quite well because of electives and activities and a program that paired older students with younger ones in the school. And this school had a tradition for eighth grade graduation where every graduating student would receive a journal. And in that journal were notes from every single teacher in the school. And while some of the notes, I'm sure, match what other students received, many of those notes were personalized just for me. Words that my teachers thought that I needed to hear as I started high school. Not just what someone else needed to hear, but me. And these notes showed me that I was truly seen by my teachers. And what a gift that was to know that my teachers looked past the surface and saw me. I still have this journal. Even as I knock things down, I still have this journal. And I still look through it from time to time when I need a reminder of who I am and who I always have been. My homeroom teacher wrote a lot of affirmations for me in this journal, but one of them was, you befriend everyone without giving up yourself. I have met no one like you. And my fifth grade teacher wrote, remember that there was a time and a place that you were very loved. I think every kid should hear that from as many adults as possible. Middle school wasn't easy for me. I felt awkward, as middle schoolers do, and I had been homeschooled before that, and so school was uncharted territory for me. And I am so thankful for the multitude of adults that saw me during that awkward time full of growing pains and loved me. But I know that not everyone has that experience, not everyone has enough loving adults in their life, the kind who write in journals that you keep even 16 years later because they made you feel so loved for three years in middle school, the kind who make you breakfast in the morning, who give you a hug when you come home from school, the kind who want to hear about your day and who see when you're struggling and actually care enough to help. And in our gospel today, we hear the story of Lazarus, who repeatedly had people walk right by him. People who even knew his name, but did not truly see him. Who did nothing to help him with his illness or his poverty. Who left him sitting at that gate, separate and apart. The rich man in this story is perfectly content caring for himself. 
and he knows Lazarus by name, but he feels no obligation toward him and certainly no connection toward him until he finds himself on the wrong side of a chasm. And he now calls across this chasm for help from the very person that he had kept on the other side of that gate. And when he asks Father Abraham to send Lazarus to help him, Abraham tells him it's too late. The chasm is too wide. But you see, this is not a chasm of God's creation. This is a chasm that the rich man himself created and is now dealing with the consequences of. And he asks for Lazarus to go to his brothers and help them, and Abraham tells him that they have the prophets. They already have what they need to keep their own chasms from forming, but they will not listen, not even if someone rises from the dead. If we are like this rich man or his brothers, and we have created a chasm, we can undo it. But we have to see Lazarus first and truly see him, not as a beggar or someone to be cast aside, not as a sick person to be avoided, not as a servant to be commanded, not as someone who exists solely to fulfill our own needs, but to truly see him as a child of God, as a full person who is worthy of respect and honor and love. Because everyone needs people in their lives who see them and who love them. And look where Lazarus is. Once cast aside and left to rot at that gate, he is now sitting with Abraham in a place of high honor. Because whose side is God on when someone is discounted? God is always on the side of those who go unseen by this world. And God sees us and has claimed us and has called us beloved. And because God has done this for us, we get to do the same for others. And so when we feel unseen, may someone see us. And may we likewise see the people who feel unseen. May we be the people who break down that gate to be with the people who are stuck on the other side. And may we tear down our own chasms that we have built so that we may better love all of God's beloved children. Amen. I invite you to stand as we sing our hymn of the day, number 519. Open your ears, O faithful people.
as scattered grains of wheat are gathered together into one bread, so let us gather our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of God's good creation. O God, rich in mercy, fill your church with righteousness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. Empower the baptized by your spirit to be rich in good works and ready to share. God of grace, hear our prayer. Protect the earth and its creatures. Provide water, food, shelter, and favorable habitats, especially for endangered species. Preserve threatened ice caps, glaciers, parks, and beaches. God of grace, hear our prayer. Increase justice in nations, local governments, and courtrooms. Guide lawyers and those who hold public office to act with compassion and discernment, especially those here in Wasika. God of grace, hear our prayer. Give food to the hungry, set the captives free, lift up those who are bowed down, watch over the stranger, tend to those who are ill, especially those that we name now aloud or in our hearts. Stir us to act in the best interest of our neighbors. God of grace, hear our prayer. Enliven our praise. Inspire musicians, artists, poets, and all who create beauty in this place. God of grace, hear our prayer. Enfold the saints who have died in the arms of your loving care. Grant that the holy angels accompany us and bring us to eternal life with them in the light of your presence. God of grace, hear our prayer. Gather together in the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, gracious God, we offer these and all our prayers to you, spoken and unspoken. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. I invite you to share a sign of peace with one another. invite you to be seated as we continue with the offering. you to stand. 
Let us pray. O God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need, awaken us to the needs of others, and at the end, bring all the world to your feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, You may be seated. A few announcements before we conclude our worship today. Confirmation this week will be at Faith at 6.30, going until 7.15 p.m. Our next Young at Heart service on the second Sunday of every month will be October 9th, and that will be a pet blessing service. And Dan and Cheryl Forrest have offered to let us come and worship at the farm. And so we will have um, details about that. If there isn't already an address, an address in your bulletin, there will be next week. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's in there right now. Um, it is awesome. The address is in your bulletin. And thank you to Dan and Cheryl for hosting us. It will be a really fun time. So bring your pets. Please be mindful of how they will do around other animals <laughs> as you are deciding to bring them. And you are welcome to bring a picture of your animal if it is not the best choice to bring them in person. So, <laughs> all right, am I missing any other announcements? Mary has one. The 23rd and 30th of October, we will need ushers. So please talk to Mary if you are available. And Dan? Question. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. And bring your own chairs. It'll be it'll be a fun day. It will be very fun. Come ready for some more holy chaos. Yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, for our milestones this morning, does anybody have a milestone that they would like to share with us this week? Celebrating the life of Glenn Morris. Milestone. Good job. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Completed the 100 chart at preschool. Milestone. <laughs> Any other milestones to share this morning? We will continue to use our milestones jar in worship every week as we celebrate all of our moments, big and small, and everything in between together as a community. And we'll continue to watch it fill up. All right. With that, I invite you to stand for the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We sing together our sending hymn number 723, Canticle of the Turning. 